This is the Old Testament reading. Micah chapter 6, verse 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression and the body of my fruit for the sin of my soul? He, ha- he has told you, O, moral, or, o mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and love kindness, and to walk humbly with your Lord. This is the New Testament reading, First John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. We, love, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lie down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word to speak, but in truth and action. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Hudson. Thank you, everyone. Good morning again. As I mentioned, uh, today is our Compassion Sunday. We have a few people that came in after my greeting, so I'm just repeating myself. Compassion International is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to release children from from poverty in Jesus' name. Okay? And they've been doing this for the past 60 years five years and they currently provide services and help for over 1.8 million children around the world see but the reason the reason I believe that they've been so successful is that they've been blessed by God obviously but more importantly and just as importantly they're successful because they help ordinary people ordinary citizens ordinary individuals like you and me become superheroes Dun, da, da, da. No? Yeah, no, yes, no. And maybe, and maybe you never dreamt about becoming a superhero before. How many of you have, actually, when you were a little child? And, no, nobody. Hey, see, there's a few. There's a few out there that wanted those superpowers, right? To do justice, right? Yeah. Exactly. But even for those of you who haven't dreamt about becoming a superhero, I know you have thought about this, at least thought about it, maybe once, twice in passing. You feel like there's something within you that can change the world. You feel like you could and should make a difference. Am I right? Yeah? Nod your heads. Yeah. We all have that within us, that innate sense that we were created for greatness. We were. And, but then life beats us up, right? We grow up in the system, and then we may achieve levels of comfort in, in life and status and so forth, but, but there's that yearning within us that, that we want to make a difference in our lives here while we're alive. You know, and that's exactly what Everett Swanson faced. He was a pastor and evangelist who was sent to Seoul, Korea during the Korean War. And what he experienced was that while sharing the good news with soldiers, okay, he was horrified by the thousands and thousands of orphans who were um, affected by the war, whose parents had been killed during the fighting. Okay? And the story goes one particular morning, early morning while he was uh, walking the streets and praying, he noticed a truck full of sanitation workers up ahead of him. And the workers were walking around and what seemed like they were kicking these bundles of rags. And then they were picking up the rags and throwing up into the back of their pickup truck. And while he, when he got closer to the truck 
and he looked in the back of the truck, he realized to his horror that it wasn't just rags. There were actually children who had frozen the night before and who were malnourished and who had died from hunger. And this scene haunted him. So what the sanitation workers were doing were they were going around waking up the kids by gently kicking the, the children. And if they woke up, they would be startled and they would go run off to face another day of hunger. Well, eventually, Everett got back to the United States. But he was haunted by the thought of all these children. And he was faced with the challenge, the insurmountable challenge of, what can I do? I'm just one person. You know, how much difference can I make? But he was challenged by God. So he just started sharing his story. And he's sharing his story. And lo and behold, because all things are possible with God, as he shared his story, other people's hearts were captured. Other people decided to stand up against this injustice and say, we want to participate. We want to help. How can we help? They started donating time, resources, and money. And that's how Compassion International was birthed over 65 years ago. See, and 65 years later, Compassion International is in over 26 countries. They're partnering with local churches to make a difference in the poorest of poor communities and neighborhoods throughout the world. But most importantly, they are changing lives. Let me show you what I mean with the short video. You guys want to watch the video? When I was five years old, my dad broke his leg and he couldn't work. We didn't have money for food. I was very scared. Near our home, bad people would be out at night and there was always trash everywhere. I felt like no one cared about me and I didn't matter. When I was nine, one of my neighbors told me about compassion. I didn't know what it was about, but I liked it because I received a lot of help. I was fed there at the church and I learned how to take care of myself. I learned that I was special and that God loved me and that he had a plan for my life. And I learned that I could ask Jesus into my heart. And when I did, I was so happy. I was waiting to get a letter from my sponsor. And when it finally came, I felt very happy and special. They were very loving in their letters. They loved me so much, even though we never met in person. At 15, I remember being so thankful for my sponsors and everything they did for me. I will remember them until the last day of my life. Without their help, my life would be so different. All I can say is thank you for so much love that showed me God's love. Now I know I have value and I know I have a future. My name is Silda, this is my story.
Release a child from poverty in Jesus' name. A child is waiting for you. To release a child from poverty in Jesus' name. Wow. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. See, and that's virtually what God did for us when he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. He showed us compassion. He walked with us. And that's what God asks us to do. You know, we, we have no idea. We don't. You know, we, we've won the lottery in life. We, we who live in the United States are just a small percentage, less than 5% of the world's population. And yet we live in wealth. We have no idea how deplorable the conditions are. We can turn on a faucet and have clean running water. We have t- clean toilets, if you clean them, of course, but you gotta clean them in order for the, you can ask my son that, right? Kind of things, but no, but you guys get what I'm, like, we've won the lottery. We literally have. And we have a responsibility because of that. God walks with us and he expects us to do the same. As Hudson read for us in Micah, to do justice. To walk humbly with our Lord. That's who we are. You know, and that's this, Hilda's story was a, a similar story that I and our family heard nearly 10 years ago, and that's why we chose to sponsor. Um, At first, we're going to sponsor three children, one for each child of our children, right? Around the similar ages for our children. And the first, I'm going to tell you about the the first child that we um, sponsored. His name's uh, Andrew, Andrew Alcon. He's 18 years old right now, so we sponsored him from the age of eight. His parents, at the time when we sponsored him, his... um, Mother had already died of AIDS, and a couple of years into the sponsorship, his father passed away as well. He's living with his uncle and his uncle's family. And rather than sponsoring a third child from Compassion International, we as a family decided, you know what? Let's make a difference in Andrew's life. You know, let's, when we have extra gifts that we want to pass on or if we have tithe money or extra we just want to bless Andrew and see and so we started doing that so instead of sponsoring a third child we just started investing into the the two children that we do have and and you know God would bless us and we would pass on the blessing financially and and they purchased the chicken at first and you would think what we have all these chickens running around in Hawaii right why can't we just ship them over to Uganda, he lives in Uganda, right? But then the blessing of having a chicken is that not only can Andrew eat, now the family can start eating. And they can raise the chickens and the chickens multiply. And Andrew started showing some signs of his entrepreneurial skill. And as we bless his family, him and his uncles and his family more, they bought a cow. You know, simple things. What would you do with a cow? Well, cows provide milk, which provides nourishment, right? And in his latest letter, Andrew, uh, he asked us to pray for him and especially his studies because, you know, he's not a great student. He's not going to be the doctor or the scientist. And sort of, but he said, you know, with the, the, the money that you guys have been sending us, I'm, I'm planning to build rental properties. And that like blew us away. Like his, his life has been, and not because of us, no, no, but because of what God is doing with Compassion International. And Compassion International has, 
has invited us to partner with them to make a, a literal difference. Andrew would have been running around in the streets of Uganda, orphaned. But he has a future, he has a hope. And that's the same thing that God has given us, this opportunity to hope and to dream in Jesus' name. See, that's really what we all desire because we want to make a difference in our lives. So let me end with a, with a story, a familiar story that you may have heard before, but it reinforces my point that we can each make a difference. So there was an older gentleman who lived by the beach. And as his custom was, he would walk the beach early in the morning. And during the certain seasons of the year, there would be starfish that would wash up on the shore. And in, on this particular morning, there were thousands of starfish that was washed up on the shore. And, and for the most part, most of them won't be able to make it back into the ocean. Majority of them would die, and he knew that. But he had become accustomed to this because it happens every year. It happens every season. All these thousands upon thousands of starfish always die. But this particular morning, as he, he was walking down the beach, he saw a young boy, a young lad. And the son, this boy was doing something. He was picking up something and he was throwing it into the ocean. And as the man approached, he, he saw what the boy was doing. The boy was picking up the starfish one by one and throwing them into the ocean. So the young man, the older man approached the young boy and asked him, what are you doing, son? But obviously he knew what he was doing, right? But he said it in such a way where he was just, condemning his act of kindness, his compassion. And the young boy would, would grab another starfish and just throw it in. And he replied, I'm throwing starfish back into the ocean. The older gentleman said, why? Why would you do that? You can't make a difference. Look at how many starfish are on the shore. They're going to die. And as the young man grabbed another starfish and looked at it, and he looked at the gentleman, and he threw it into the ocean. He said, made a difference to that one. And that's the point of this morning, that you are created in the image of God, that we are filled by the Holy Spirit of God. And yes, it is a financial sacrifice. It is. It's, it's $38 a month, you know, and... Uh, there's a, a, an additional program in which you can contribute to to help um, the fight against AIDS in these certain countries. So for our sponsorship, it comes out to $45 a month per child, okay? And, and really, you know, I, I understand many of you are on fixed incomes and it can be a stretch and so forth. But if you can, if you can cut back here or there, I ask you to pray about this because in Jesus' name, we can make a difference. Amen? Let's play, close in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for this opportunity because you have been compassionate with us. You walk with us, Lord. You have extended this gift of life to us through your son, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. For you are such a good God. And we want to do the same, Lord. Stir within our hearts. Give us a boldness to act, to sponsor these children. We thank you as we pray, Lord, that you already know before we even ask. You know all of our needs our cares and our concerns, and even our challenges, and we lift them up to you. We pray for our brothers and sisters who weren't even able to make it here this morning because of the challenges, physically, financially. Challenge of just growing older, Lord. We lift up 
our brothers and sisters to you. And in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, bring forth your healing, your freedom. Go ahead, brothers and sisters, lift up your concerns and your cares and your praise to our mighty God and Father, for he is a good God who deserves to be praised. Amen and amen.